Welcome to today's episode of Day in the Life series of the Tech Talk. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to Benedict Badgerman, and uh, Benedict will be sharing his experience as a power platform consultant with us today on the show. Hi, Benedict, and welcome to the Tech Talk show. Hey, thanks for having me. So first of all, let's start things off with a little introduction from you. Uh, with Benedict and what do you do for a living? Uh, yeah, so Benny Bergman name, I'm from uh, from Germany and moved to Sweden or live in Sweden at the moment. Moved there like uh, four and a half years ago, around about, uh, working as a power platform consultant for CM Consultana here. And um, yeah, my, mostly I'm doing uh, development and architectural solution architect stuff um, for our customers. So uh, let's learn a little bit more about your background now. How, how did you get into the tech journey? How, how did the whole tech journey begin? Uh, you know, how did it all start for you? Uh, yeah, so that actually way back, way back, I'm always or have been interested in computers and uh, computer science and so on. And I, when I did my, what was it, high school or in Germany, it's called Abitur. Um, it was on focus on, on computer science already. And then I studied computer science as well. And I have my, my degree in computer science, uh, which and a part of both of them, school and studying was obviously development. And my father was a developer and my brother is, and I liked it as well. So um, I stuck to it and still do that and love it. Uh, and then, so I started as a plain, .NET developer added a bit of uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, Angular uh, over time. Uh, and then I had like a on and off relationship with uh, Dynamics CRM back in the days, uh, 2011 and 2013. Um, and then when I moved to Sweden, it was like all in uh, only Dynamics, 100% uh, uh, Dynamics CRM back then 2013 and moving on to, um, to the Power Platform then um as the, the customers also move to to the cloud later that's basically where i'm coming from i'm sure people will be interested to know about the role of a power platform consultant but but since i have you here now what does the power platform consultant do and what does an average day at work look like for you uh yeah so that depends on the customer uh, as it always is in consultancy it depends but um, in some projects, I'm uh, the solution architect, and then it's more like consulting the customer on which approach should we choose? Uh, should it be like implemented in, in Dataverse or uh, do we need something else like a Azure function to do, to do stuff or should it be low code or pro code and more like guiding the customer in uh, choosing the correct uh, approach? Um, and writing solution uh, proposals and so on. And in some other projects, it's more like, um, yeah, the developer that implements like plugins, uh, TypeScript for front end stuff, buttons in the ribbon and custom actions, custom APIs, Azure function and so on. So it depends a bit on um, in which role I have in the project and also which phase of the project we're in. So is it more under development or is it still in the analysis phase and so on? So it can vary between different stuff to do. I want to ask again, uh, Benedict, uh, what was that one thing for you that you've learned along the way uh, in your journey so far uh, that you feel has helped you out a lot that uh, you, you want to share with uh, the listeners, if you will? Yeah, that's a hard question. Um, so my focus or my, my passion is like uh, ALM and uh, so application lifecycle management and handling all those. And then also creating standards um, like development standards and uh, standardized structure of projects and so on and so forth. So, and this maybe is the one I, I've learned and helped me a lot is create a standard and try to stick to it um, because this makes moving between projects if you're a consultant way easier if all the projects follow the same standard that's maybe something one should take take with um 
as a power platform consultant, so, so let me get your take on the future of coding, that is the traditional software development now. How is the no-code, low-code movement, you know, affecting the field of software development? Do you still think that we have a need for people to still learn the tra traditional development, uh, that the traditional software development, uh, when we have the no-code and, uh, you know, the no-code movement that people now use to, to develop a lot of solutions? What's your take on this one? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think uh, there is uh, a lot of need for, for developers. Um, it might be even more than before, uh, to be honest. Uh, not, so if you look in our uh, part where we are doing power platform and the low code platform we have, but also everything around. So um, there could be customers that can't use the power platform, so they need developers for sure. But, but if you stay in our area, which is the power platform still, we have a lot of uh, gears and stuff we we need developers for. Like, as I mentioned, we have the custom API, have custom actions, plugins, uh, Azure functions we can integrate. Um, we can create PCFs and front-end TypeScript buttons and so on. So there's, there's a lot of stuff uh, where we need developers for. And uh, as we have seen for um, with like uh, PCFs, Microsoft is adding stuff where developers can help. They also add stuff where we don't need developers any longer, which is like all the stuff that Power Automate does now and we don't need plugins for that any longer. But I think the overall amount of stuff a developer can do um, is at least the same as it has been before. And I see that in our projects, we still need developers. And that's one of the uh, resources that are, is missing the most. Uh, to, to have good developers to help the citizen developers or the function consultants to implement the best solution possible for the customer and extend the platform with stuff that, that needs to be like on point for, uh, for our customer and specified and tailored to the customer's needs. So uh, what are some of the key highlights that uh, you want to leave my audience with today on how they can learn to become a successful power platform consultant just like you are. Thanks, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I think there is uh, there is a lot of stuff on, on Microsoft Learn one can or should take a look at uh, when it comes to what functionalities do we have in Power Platform and so on. And then uh, we have a lot, sorry, uh, I, we have a lot of, uh, blogs and so on in the community and YouTube channels you could learn of. Uh, I would definitely, definitely subscribe to uh, the different newsletters we have, like the Power Platform Weekly and the Power, Black Platform, Power Platform Developer Weekly, um, which comes out every Monday and every Thursday, I think, Wednesday it is. Um, so then you have like uh, an overview of the new stuff coming in the in the platform, which is always good. If you want to be a consultant, you have to be up to date and know. You don't have to know in detail how everything works. That's that's not possible. So you, you shouldn't attempt to learn everything there is in the platform. I don't think there is anyone that can add everything in the platform. But you should know like. Um, in general, what is possible with the platform, which different, uh, different stuff do we have and components you could use and how, what in, in general are the, the use cases and the pros, cons and stuff like that uh, of the different stuff we have in the platform. And uh, you have to keep yourself updated. Um, so as mentioned, look, uh, uh, so subscribe to different um, newsletters and maybe the rss feed of the power platform um, block which is always good to to have for announcements so when does something go in general availability or new preview features and so on so that you can adapt uh, to that i would say and how long do you see that it's going to take an average person to start working as a power platform consultant you know acquiring the skill and then start consulting for people um it ab absolutely depends on how how fast this person is um like getting stuff and learn stuff 
Um, so there, there needs to be like a, a good amount of time for, for learning. There is a lot in the platform, um, but you won't start as a, as a senior consultant. So you probably start as a junior consultant and no one expects you to know as much as a senior consultant now, for sure. So um, I think pretty fast someone can be like a good consultant in the space of their, I don't know how to call it, but of their like consultant range or, or sex consultant level, I would say, and then move on from uh, like junior consultant, consultant and so on uh, while you learn new stuff. So and uh, for people uh, wishing to connect with you now, where can they find you on social media? Uh, yeah, I, I can uh, can give you the link so you can drop it in, in the comment as well or in the description. But I'm active on Twitter, uh, Bergman B, my name there, and then I'm on LinkedIn um, or per email or on my blog. So I have a contact page there as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Always happy to help. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, for sharing your knowledge and your time with us today on the Tech Talk Show. So you've heard it from Benedict today. So hopefully you've been able to pick a lesson or two from Benedict's experience. Uh, so here is where we're going to draw the curtain on today's episode of the Tech Talk. Uh, so from myself and Benedict now, it's a bye-bye, and I'll see you again another time.